everyone, this is a video tutorial on how to determine the RS configuration of a compound in its Fisher projection form. So the first thing I want to do is just cover the guidelines and then we'll do an example. So if we look at them, the first one is to rank the priorities of the groups. One being the highest priority, four being the lowest priority. So now when it comes to prioritizing, there are two schools of thought. The first one says that you're going to rank it based on atomic number. So whichever atom has the highest atomic number, that is the one that will have the highest priority. The other idea is that you could base it on mass. Whatever has the highest mass, that has the highest priority. My preference is to go based on atomic number because sometimes mass can be a little bit misleading. People will base it on the size rather than on the actual atom that's attached. So whatever your professor says, go with. I prefer dealing with the atomic number. The second one is to draw a curved arrow going from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. It's completely fine if you have to cut through uh, group number 4 in order to get to one of the other groups, and we'll take a look at what that would look like. The third thing is to take a look at that fourth group and figure out where it's located. Is it located on a vertical axis or is it located on a horizontal axis? So it's silly, um, it's in Dr. Paula Bruce's book, uh, but it's worked for me. So one is if it's in the vertical axis, that's very good. So vertical, very, I don't know. So in that case there, the uh, reason we're saying it's very good is because what you see is what you get. So if you have a clockwise, that's an R. If you have a counterclockwise, that's an S. This is the general rule. Alternatively, you could be in the horizontal stance, and horizontal is horribly bad, meaning it's the opposite of what you think it should be. So now when we have a counterclockwise, that is R, and clockwise is S. So these are the rules. You just got to play by them. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, so let's take a look at an example where we're going to figure out the RS configuration of a Fisher projection. So using the rules that we've established, the very first thing you need to do is rank the priorities of the four groups. So over here, our four groups are these ones here, and this carbon in the middle, that's going to be the asymmetric center. So now remember, when you're going to be determining that priority, you want to look only at the atoms that are immediately attached. So meaning we're going to be comparing H to Cl to C to C. We're not looking at the full extent of the compound. So now in this case here, we know that because chlorine has the highest atomic number, it's going to have the highest priority. That'll be number one. And hydrogen will be four as it has the lowest atomic number. Now if we take a look here, we're comparing two carbons. So at the point where you have exactly the same atom attached, you are now able to go out and see, well, what atoms are immediately attached to that particular compound. So over here for this carbon, we have three hydrogens immediately attached to it. And for this carbon, we have two hydrogens and one chlorine. So now chlorine has priority over the hydrogens, so this group will have a higher priority. So this will be ranked priority two, and this one here will be ranked priority three. Now that we've done all the prioritizing, we want to draw an arrow from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. So over here, I'm going to go from 1 to 2 and then from 2 to 3. It's completely fine to cut across 4. At this point, when you're drawing the arrows, 4 is kind of irrelevant. So now, the next thing you need to do after you've established the direction that you're moving is now look at the fourth group. And now the fourth group will dictate whether or not that would be in an R or mean an S. So in this case, because 4 is sitting on the vertical position, remember vertical means very good, what you see is what you get. So in this case, I'm moving in a counterclockwise direction, so I know that this here would have the S configuration. Let's take a look at an example where it's not in the vertical position. Okay, so now let's take a look at an example where group 4 is not on that very good vertical position. So let's just run through all the rules, though, to get some good practice. The first thing you need to do is rank your priorities. Higher atomic number, higher priority. Remember, you also are only looking at the atom immediately attached. In a case like this, many people are wanting to take this guy and say that's the highest priority because it's the biggest. This is very misleading. So I just want to show you this case you understand why I go with atomic number. So over here we have chlorine versus carbon, carbon, and carbon. So at this point, the only thing we know is that this here we can't say is any priority. Only this group has a priority, and that would be first priority because chlorine has a higher atomic number than carbons do. Now at this point, we can't tell the difference between our carbons, so we have to go to the very next attachment. So if I take a look at this one, it's attached to two hydrogens and a chlorine. This is attached to three hydrogens, and this is to two hydrogens and a carbon. So this chlorine has priority over everything else, so we know that this is ranked group two. 
I also know that this here has priority over this one because this is a carbon which has higher priority than those hydrogens. So this would be group three and this here would be group four. I also wanna point out, it's important to understand H is not always gonna be your fourth priority. So a lot of times people get complacent and they wanna say, well, wherever the hydrogen is, you always have to make sure you understand whatever group four is. It could be an H, it could be a methyl, it could be a number of different compounds. So now at this point, we've run it so that we have all of our groups prioritized. So now we're gonna draw our arrow going from one to two and two to three. So we're moving in this direction here. So this here is counterclockwise, which is usually S. But remember, you need to look and see where is my fourth group located. So this fourth group is located on a horribly bad horizontal position. Remember, bad because it's the opposite to what we would normally think. So that means that this is not in fact an S, we would actually call this an R configuration. So those are how you would deal with figuring out your R and S configuration for a Fisher projection.